I haven't done an in-car video in a while, so I thought we might as well talk a little bit about these new engines. I'm driving this 2010 with a 5.3, and it runs great. Here we are on the highway. It's 106 degrees out. It's running cool. RPMs are low. If I need to accelerate, you can see the transmission downshift. Not so much with the 6.2, Zelda's pull out of it. I don't know if you can see in the mirror here, but we got the Gen 5 behind us. Mitch is in four cylinder mode right now. So he might even be getting better mileage than me because even though we have AFM active on this 5.3, it's not engaged because we're under too much of a load. We're actually going up a slight hill right now and AFM is not gonna engage. Let me talk a little bit about the Gen 5 and its technology. We all know it has direct injection. We all know it has VVT. We all know it has AFM. What makes it different than the Gen 4? First, high compression, over 11 to 1 compression. This means more cylinder pressure. More cylinder pressure means more power, more torque. How can they get away with it? Well, they get away with it because of the head design and the direct injection. They're putting the fuel directly into the combustion chamber. I am told that GM put over 6 million hours in the head design of the Gen 5 engine. That's a lot of computer engineering into one cylinder head but I'm sure GM wanted to make it work right the first time and typical GM engines last a long time all the way back to the small block, the original LS Gen 3, the Gen 4. So the direct injection in the Gen 5 allows the high compression. Now the continuous variable valve timing means the cam is not only in one of two positions or discrete it's constantly moving. It's constantly maximizing the cylinder pressure. This is what allows, as you can see, that this 5.3, I'm under a load, it just upshifted or downshifted. What this means is rather than the engine have to rev up to get in its power band, the camshaft phases to put it in its power band. So that means if you're at 2,000 RPM, 3,000 RPM, or just off idle, the cam will maximize the cylinder pressure. This means less transmission shifts and more efficient operation. That's one technology in the Gen 5 engine. Enhanced air fuel management means the engine is in a four cylinder mode whenever it's not under a load. Now, it goes hand in hand with the high cylinder pressures. The early Gen 4 AFM or multiple displacement system could only operate under very light or no load and that's because the engine had no torque. In this 5.3, you turn it into half the size and there's no torque available there. You could not accelerate in the air fuel management mode. With the newer engines having the cam phasing, the high compression, the higher cylinder pressures, they can accelerate in the four cylinder mode. They can cruise on the highway in the four cylinder mode. In fact, Mitch is in the four cylinder mode right now. So while I'm a 5.3 liter engine, in this small lightweight JK with small tires, he is a 3.1 liter with 40 inch tires and a heavy JK. So the enhanced air fuel management is allowing the large displacement engine to not have a penalty for being large displacement. It's reducing what are called pumping losses. And pumping losses are when an internal combustion engine does not run at wide open throttle. When you throttle back and create vacuum, you end up having what's called pumping losses, and that's mainly what AFM eliminates. So, while not quite a 3.1 liter engine, it's close. On the other hand, with the Gen 5 engine, having the high compression, having the continuous variable valve timing, it allows horsepower. So, this Gen 5 engine, now has similar power on the top to an LS3, but more power under the curve at lower RPMs, because again, it can control its cylinder pressure at any point. This means even the smaller displacement engines, like the 5.3s, will be able to perform like a larger displacement engine. That means the Gen 5 5.3 may, might make a good candidate for a heavy JK, because by phasing the cam, the high compression, the direct injection, it may give us enough torque 
to move that heavy JK with constantly, without constantly downshifting. I just had a customer in the shop who told me he has a pen start, and it drives him crazy when he went to 37s that is constantly downshifting and revving past 4,000 RPM. Well, we used to see some of that with the 5.3 and the Gen 4 motors on heavy JKs, and I'm thinking with the Gen 5s we're not. It may make a better choice. Uh, we have a Gen 5 in the shop, uh, 5.3, and we're going to be installing it soon, and we'll we'll report back. So. There's a little bit of information on the Gen 5. When we get off this road trip, we'll check our miles per gallon. My best guess would be if these that was a 6.2 Gen 4 running on premium, and this is a 5.3 Gen 4 running on regular, the 5.3 would get better mileage. And the way Mitch drives, he is not maximizing economy. So, we're going to compare the mileage when we get back, and my guess would be that he should get about 30% less mileage than, than us. He's on 40s, he's lifted, heavy JK, heavy axles, uh, steeper gearing, larger displacement, but we'll see. Maybe you can tell I'm a little bored, but while I'm rambling here, I'm going to make a point. You'll notice that cruising at 70 here, now 75, this engine will rev up to hold the RPM. What's basically happening here is this engine is downshifting, it's going into performance enrichment to meet the load. That means that we're richening out the mixture from about 14.2, because we're running some alcohol in the fuel, to 12 to 1. That makes this 5.3 less efficient than that 6.2. Because right now that 6.2 is probably staying in 6th gear in closed loop at 14.2. Not to mention the fact it has higher compression and continuous VVT. So this is where the 5.3 really doesn't have an advantage. When it's under a heavy load it will go into performance enrichment and use more fuel than the larger engines that have inherent torque and stay in the higher gear and stay in closed loop.